Any other person quoting a cavalry manual from 1920s or prior to that, I'm 100% going to question you on why you're citing a thing that has nothing to do with your horse sport at all. Because at the root of it, it's just fat shaming people. It's almost like she didn't read the actual Calvary manual at all, if that's what you think this study is about. But, you know. Hey, bitch, and welcome back to another video of me talking about people I hate. Today's video is gonna be a little different, why? Because I'm just gonna start making videos about stuff when people are just being blatantly wrong and or annoying. Recently, there's been an uptake, a trend in people wanting to quote unquote dismantle or trying to debunk the 20% rule because it hurts their feelings. It's all fat shaming, just fat shaming. You're just fat shaming them. I love that. But before we get into it, I have to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Animal Nutrition Calculator. If you're unfamiliar, Animal Nutrition Calculator is the most amazing premium online site for figuring out and tailoring your animal's nutrition. All of Animal Nutrition Calculator's calculators are $3.99 to $4.99, so literally cheaper than a cup of coffee, and you can understand all of your animal's nutritional needs and requirements no matter what food you feed them within just a matter of seconds. It's literally one of the most useful tools ever. If you have animals, this is essential for you. All of their calculators are backed by the most recent and relevant veterinary data regarding nutrition, so it is just absolutely optimal and perfect for you and for your animals. The website and the products really speak for themselves. That's why I opted to be a brand ambassador for this company. I truly love it. I use it for all of my animals. So it's super amazing, super essential. You guys can click my link down below. The first 100 people get a 25% off discount with code LINK25. Thank you so much again to Animal Nutrition Calculator. Let's get to it. I venture to guess that the biggest reason why people want to disregard and dismantle the 20% rule is because it hurts their feelings. That's really the only answer or reason I can think of. Just because something is subjectively offensive to you does not mean that that's an objective fact. And I'm so sick of people saying otherwise. Really, I've seen mostly fat positive, body positive influencers in the equestrian community that have started coming out saying that the 20% rule is fat phobic. And let's talk about why it's not. And this is not exclusive to plus size riders. For example, you could be a child trying to ride a miniature horse, but you just so happen to weigh more than 20%, which would mean that you are wrong for that horse and you shouldn't be riding them. You need to move up. The 20% rule has been around for over a hundred years, and it only recently became controversial with the body positivity movement, where now every single thing is fat phobic. Every single time someone calls someone out for something, you're fat shaming. Again, I want to reiterate, being more than 20% of a horse's body weight does not equate to you being fat. I'm too big. I'm more than 20% of a lot of horses body weights that I would not be able to ride and I'm 130 pounds. This is a really funny article and this is a perfect prime example of what I've been seeing lately. There's a lot of places, news organizations, rider forums and blogs and even equestrians which is super embarrassing. And really what people are trying to say to debunk the 20% rule is that this is outdated because it stems back to the Calvary manual in the 1920s. Which is quite hilarious that people say that because we do have so many studies, veterinary studies that still support this over a century later. People just wanna turn a blind eye to it. And instead of doing any research 
at all. They just regurgitate what the next body positive person says that, oh, it's fat phobic because we don't have any new data. It's just the Calvary manual of the 1920s, which is incorrect. And you look foolish for saying something so stupid. But what's so funny Every single article that I have seen or blog post or whatever, they always end up suggesting towards the end. Well, yeah, the 20% rule is actually correct, but it's just not correct for some horses. And these conclusions, again, are based off of no data, no peer-reviewed studies. These are just people's opinions. That's my opinion! Anyway, I figured we would watch a video of some horse influencers on TikTok. And this is, again, a very common thing. I'm not trying to call out these individuals specifically because they're just regurgitating this nonsense that's not backed by any veterinary data. All over TikTok, I've seen many people do it, not just them. I'm only using this video as an example. So don't go hate on these people. They're just unknowledgeable. They don't know any better. But let's watch. 1920 Calvary Manual is when somebody is fat shaming somebody on so you know what i find really ironic about this whole 20 percent rule so a lot of a lot of these people who are quoting this whole 20 percent rule oh my god you're gonna break your horse's back because you're too fat oh my god you're too big to ride you're hurting that horse oh my god because you're too fat it's all fat shaming a and b no other horse sport has anything to do with cavalry anything other than eventing Venting is its own sport. It's almost like she didn't read the actual Calvary manual at all, if that's what you think this study is about. But, you know, people like this, when they try to reference things, they just, they do the bare minimum research. So she's probably just regurgitating what she heard somebody say. For those of you who are like this lady and you haven't read the Calvary manuals, nor do you know what they are, the Calvary manuals are essentially a horse care guide. Not to mention that there's additional veterinary information in these Calvary manuals. They're not exclusive to just the Calvary. They were originally put out as horse care guides. So I encourage everybody to go read these and educate yourself before you speak on something that you know nothing about. If I see any other equestrian quoting anything from any sort of cavalry mandate, menu, manuscript, whatever, it's a huge gigantic red flag. Sport was not born out of cavalry trials like eventing was. That's the entire reason that cross country exists is to simulate a battlefield to see how your horse would perform. Hunter jumpers, Western riders, any of any other person quoting a cavalry manual from 1920s or prior to that, I'm 100% going to question you on why you're citing a thing that has nothing to do with your horse sport at all. Because at the root of it, it's just fat shaming people. Again, I mean, she didn't even read the data at all. It's very obvious she didn't even read what's in the Calvary manual. This is the equivalent of saying that sugar is actually good for you, you guys, because the original study on sugar in 1967 being bad and being linked to cardiovascular issues was way back in 1967. So who's to say if that data is legit anymore? As if we don't have a billion and one other studies surpassing that, that still support that same data in the same similar findings. This 20% rule is ridiculous. And also, like you're speculating on people's weight and the horse's weight that you don't know on social media. I don't know in what world that that is helpful, but it's not in one that I live in. Okay, so let's talk about this point of you're just speculating that a person is too big. It's very obvious when someone is too big for a horse. You have to be actually stupid with an IQ in the single digits to look at someone who is blatantly too big to be riding a horse and say, well, that person is like half the size of that horse, but who knows? They could weigh within 20%. I'm sorry, when did we just start, you know, advocating for people to be dumb and stop thinking and using their brains? You can 100% tell if someone's too big to be riding a horse. If I see a grown man like Dale Brisby riding a miniature pony, um, yeah, you can pretty safely assume that he's too big. How is that helpful to anyone at all? 
It's helpful to the horses, actually. It's helpful to the horses because you prevent a myriad of problems arising from them being blatantly abused, and it is horse abuse. It is 100% damaging to them. We have tons of vet studies to back this. Again, I don't know why people think the Calvary Manual is the only thing suggesting that this is the case. Including the person that you're commenting on their video or their photo or anything like that. How are you helping them? You're not. You're just fat shaming them. No. Educating people on horse rider to weight ratios is not a bad thing. In fact, more people should actually do it. We shouldn't be encouraging animal abuse within horseback riding. Otherwise, what's going to happen, eventually regulators are going to come through and shut down the entire industry if we just start condoning abuse. This is why we actually have laws in every single horse sport outlining what is appropriate and not appropriate treatment of horses within the sport. It's so the sport doesn't get shut down for being abusive and unethical, which is exactly what we should be advocating for is the better treatment of horses. Telling people that they're too big to ride is not fat shaming. It's an objective fact. If that person is blatantly too big to be riding and it's very clear, you don't have to put them on a scale to determine that. So I guess in closing, stop fat shaming people based off a 1920s cavalry manuscript novel guide, whatever. She doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> cavalry manual manuscript guide, whatever. Whatever. Do you even know what you're talking about? This is exactly what I'm saying, you guys. Every single person who wants to dismantle the data supporting the 20% rule literally has done not even a single lick of research. So let's talk about some of this recent research that nobody seems to believe exists, right? We have so many, a lot of which are completely unbiased studies. I will link all of these studies down below for people who just want to not believe it and say that people are fat shaming. Listen, you're not fat shaming, you're supporting veterinary data by telling people that they need to follow realistic guidelines for animal health and welfare. Here we have one of our most recent studies. This was a pilot study that was conducted in 2019. And this is called the influence of rider horse body weight ratio and rider horse saddle fit on equine gait and behavior, a pilot study. In this study, they had different sizes of riders of which the large size rider was over 20% of the horse's body weight. The conclusions and clinical relevance of the study were that large riders can induce temporary lameness and behaviors consistent with musculoskeletal pain. Keep in mind, the large rider was the only rider that was more than 20%. The rider was between 23.6 and 27.5% of the horse's body weight, which is not that much more than 20%. So people who want to say that it's okay to be more than 20%, this is why it's not. The large rider in this study was literally just a few percentages more than 20% and was found and concluded to have caused this horse problems. This may relate to rider body weight and or weight distribution. Riders M and H had similar BMI, but markedly different test abandonment rates. Therefore, body weight is likely to be the more relevant issue over BMI. Another one from 2008. This was from Ohio University, and they actually did a study to see how relevant the Calvary Manual was almost a century later. And what did they find? Oh, guess what? The researchers found that an average adult light riding horse could comfortably carry about 20% of its ideal body weight. This result agrees with the value recommended by the Certified Horsemanship Association and the U.S. Calvary Manuals of Horse Management that were published in 1920. So case closed. All relevant data still supports the Calvary manuals of 1920s. It doesn't mean that we don't have new data. We do. It just means that nothing has been found that disproves the findings of a century ago. But it's only been the last five to 10 years with the body positivity movement that all of a sudden all this research is fat phobic. It's not. Stop telling people that it's fat phobic to tell others to treat their animals better. And I'm so sick of people 
talking about how the only data we have to support this is a 1920s Calvary manual, because that is so blatantly false. And you didn't even read the Calvary manual in the first place. You have no idea what you're talking about. Stay in your own lane. Don't talk about things if you're unwilling to educate yourself on them. You look stupid. Thank you so much for watching today's video, you guys. A massive thank you again to Animal Nutrition Calculator. You can check them out. That link is gonna be the first link in the description down below. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know this video was a bit harsh. I'm just so sick of people spreading misinformation that could actively harm animals. And also it's just blatantly incorrect. All these people who want to pretend like the 20% rule is just outdated and fat phobic, they should be called out too. 